Alright, in this next section we're going to be talking about exponential functions. Um, one example I like to use, especially this time of year, is uh, looking at the March Madness basketball tournament. Of course, I'm recording this, it's Saturday, uh, March 21st, and normally we would be, I would be watching all the March Madness games going on today. Um, however, due to the coronavirus, the tournament has been canceled for this year. Yeah, it's unfortunate, but um, necessary, and so we don't get to have that uh, excitement this year, but the example still works very well, whether we have that or not. And so <clears throat> what I want to look at is the number of teams in each round of the tournament. You all have probably seen these bracket, you know, sketched out a mini bracket here, but normally you would have 64 teams, and then, so that's actually in round one, you have 64 teams that play. And then, you know, in, in a basketball game, two teams play each other, the winner moves on in the tournament. And so for every two teams, one moves on, you're essentially cutting the number of teams in half. Um, so if you start with four teams, you'd have two that move on, or, you know, no matter what it is, you cut it in half. So here we started with 64. Um, and in the second round then you would have 32 teams. Okay, then you, as you move to the third round you cut that in half, you get 16, that's where we get the sweet 16 from. The fourth round has eight teams, some call that the elite eight. Then in the fifth round, cut that in half and you have four teams, that's the final four. Then you have the sixth round has two teams left, that's a championship game. And then I'm going to call this round seven, even though technically it's not a round. Um, it's just the winner of that championship game, and there's only one winner. Okay. Now, if I were to plot all of these as points, let's say we have the round as the x values and the teams as the y values, I could throw this on a graph um, fairly quickly, in fact. Let's go ahead and plot this out. And I'm going to write this so that the teams are on the vertical axis and the round number is on the horizontal. Okay, so if I take round one, for instance, um, that has 64 teams. I'll put 64 up here towards the top. And round one, 64, looks good. Round two has 32 teams. Well, that's half of 64. So if I cut that roughly in half here, that's 32. Bring the two up. We go round three. I keep going with this. That's 64. That's uh, 16 teams. Sorry, 16. And so three. Uh, I don't know. It's easier going over. Yeah. And then round four, we're down to eight teams. Pretty soon it's going to get pretty tight in here. Round five, I have four teams. So that'd be four, really, really getting tight here. Um, round six, I would have two teams. Cut that in half again. Round seven, or the championship, we have one team. And so you can see this is very getting very close to the x-axis as we continue. Um, the trend seems to be curved. It's a massive drop-off right away. 32 teams off, and then 16 teams off, and then 8 teams off. And each time you go down, you're losing less teams, even though you're still cutting it in half. And so what happens then, if I were to draw this in, we have a pattern or a type of function that we call an exponential function. In fact, because it's decreasing, it's called an exponential decay. Exponential decay.
and it's called a decay because it is always decreasing. Okay, we will see in the next video an example of an exponential growth, um, which is an always increasing exponential function. Um, one thing that's interesting, if you were to continue the pattern on, even though it wouldn't make much sense to cut a team in half or continue to move this pattern with the example here, if I were to ignore the fact that these are rounds and teams and just look at the numbers, if I went to, let's say, the eighth round, I'll just kind of fill it in down here. If I went to the eighth round, then there'd be a half. Again, maybe not rounds and teams, but just the numbers. Then with a nine input, you would have a quarter, because that's half of a half. And with a 10 input, you'd have to take half of that, which is an eighth, and so on. Right? So you'd have a 16th and a 32nd and a 64th and so forth all the way down. And it would continue forever. And what's interesting is you're starting with a positive number and cutting it in half, which means you multiply by half, which is also positive. A positive times a positive is always positive. And so this graph will never actually hit zero or drop into the negative side. It will always be positive because you're continually multiplying a positive number by one half, which itself is positive. Okay. Um, that phenomenon we've already seen before is called a horizontal asymptote. This graph gets closer and closer to the x-axis, but never will hit it. So we say that in this case, the x-axis is the horizontal asymptote. Okay, And we saw horizontal asymptotes with rational functions in the last chapter. However, um, one thing that, ra that uh, exponential functions have that rational functions do not have, I'm sorry, the other way around, one thing that rational functions have that exponentials do not have is a vertical asymptote. Even though this seems to be growing very quickly, it is not, there is no vertical asymptote here. This graph will continue to the left indefinitely. And if you think about that, continue to move in the opposite direction here. Let's say I took um, a zero you know, as my x value, then you double the 64 and you get 128. And if you put a negative one in, you'd have to double again. So I'm just moving left on the table here and putting it underneath. You double the 128 and you get 256. And if you put a negative 2, you double the 256 and you get 512. And if you move again to the left, double that, you get 1024, which is my second favorite number, by the way. Um, and then so forth. It keeps moving left, you keep doubling it. And so this thing's going to go really big, really fast. Okay keeps doubling as you go to the left. Okay, but again, there's no vertical asymptote here. So no vertical asymptote. Okay, so what's interesting about these numbers is that if you were to start at the uh, y-axis, this is your, this is the value that's on the y-axis, right? It's an input of zero. Now, I can't put it on my graph because it's up a little too high, 128 up here. But the y-axis is often called our initial value. Even though the, the tournament starts at 64 teams, if you projected it back to the y-axis, you'd have 128. And so if you started with 128, then each round is cutting that number in half. So the first round multiplies by one half to get 64. The second round multiplies by another half to get 32. The third round multiplies by another half to get 16. The fourth round multiplies by yet another half to get eight and so forth. And if you multiply, if you plug it in your calculator, whatever, 
take 128, multiply it by half times half times half times half, you would get 8 as the output. Notice, though, that at each step, you're really looking at powers of 1 half. This is equivalent to uh, 128 times 1 half to the fourth power. And so the 4 represents the round number, and the, if you calculate the output, you would get the 8. So now thinking about this in terms of an equation, we would just say that y equals 128 times 1 half to the x, where again, the x is the round number and the y is the number of teams. And this will give us a formula for calculating the number of teams at any round number. It's kind of interesting. And in this formula, there are two very important numbers, obviously the 128, which is the y-intercept, and the 1 half, which uh, I would call the, uh, the rate, the, yeah, okay, I'm being a little bit inaccurate in doing this, but I'm giving you the right ideas. Uh, okay, so as a general rule then, an exponential function takes on the form y equals c times a to the x. This is the formula that your textbook will use. The c is going to be the y-intercept, and the a will be your rate. In this case, it's cutting in half. Okay. Um, we also often call the C the initial value. Um, and I'll call the A is the uh, rate of decrease. Okay, so C is the initial value, A is the rate of decrease. Now what's interesting in our example, when the rate, which is one half, when that thing is less than one, that's going to imply that we have a decrease or a decay. All right, so our exponential decays come from the rate being less than one. Now there are some other restrictions on what the C and the A value have to be. The A value is always a positive number, can't have a negative on a base there. Uh, the C values um, cannot be zero, for instance, so there's some restrictions on what these are. But uh, generally speaking, as long as your rate is less than one, you will have a decay. In the next example, we'll take a look at um, a situation where you have exponential growth instead of decay, you would have growth, and that will give us a rate of greater than one.